Hey, this is your host, Gabriel Phoenix, and welcome to another Lord of the Rings Rise to War. <clears throat> Today, we got a special surprise for you. We're going to be doing expert tips. That's right. Pat yourself in your back because you made it to Main Hall 10. You got in there and you fought hard. You researched. You did the what you could possibly do, and hopefully you followed my tips to achieve to get to this place. That's all I can hope for is that at least I was helpful. Now, let's get into the game and give you some expert tips on some Lord of the Rings. Let's, we're logging in right now. And by the way, yes, now that our server, we're going to be drawing close to war. So now we're going to have to try to prepare for that. It's going to get crazy. The opponent army is going to get a lot more stronger uh, the more time that has gone by. So look at that castle. Man, that stronghold is beautiful. Let's take a closer look at this because when you reach your main hall 10, you got to you got to really bask in the glory. Look at that. Such a beautiful stronghold. And I'm telling you folks, this is something that you achieve greatly. Now, when you're here, you should remember a couple of things. I told you to build your resources. You know, you've been should, you should be doing your power levels until you get to chapter 20 on here. Uh, this is where you're probably going to stop for a little bit because you have to do something that requires a lot of resources. It's going to take you time, and that is to build your final unit, which is a tier 4 unit. So, I have here, I already got my level 10, and I am currently working on getting the materials for this, uh, what is it called again? Oh, the stable, the sworn, the swan knights, not sworn, swan knights stable, and this is your ultimate goal to get this. These are very, very difficult to get they require a lot of resources you're not going to be able to produce mass amounts of them so what to do you got to prepare for war right well if you followed my instructions you should be able to have your levies up high enough so you're going to lift your levies from the other ones you do from level five to level seven or six to get your gold and when you go here and you're collecting your gold levies, you should be able to produce 10 to 12,000, which will give you enough to level up your soldiers. Because remember I said before level 5 is significant, now we're going to go up higher. We're going to go and get to our maximum levels for our tier 3 units. These are the ones that we're going to be using more. Stop Stop using your tier 1 units, your tier 2 units, only the knights if you're playing humans are useful. They are great for your second in command. Uh, and you're going to build your commanders a lot better. And uh, a lot better. You're going to build your commanders better because you're going to start focusing on three commanders now. Not one, three. But you start focusing on them when your main commander hits level 35. Mine's just hit level 36 because we've been going crazy all over the board. Level 35, you're going to be able to do a lot. You're going to be able to get your commanders. You should be able to reach power level 45 to take care of those 35s. And what you're going to be focusing on that is your Swan Knights or your final unit to be able to boost that power level to over 45. Because right now we really got to focus on building your army. Your building should be done. Uh, when you're doing this, this is what it should look like. Let me enter here. Oh, wrong button. Sorry. All right. So... You should have your storage to level 15. You have to have a level 15 storage to able get your main hall to level 10. It will not let you get your main hall level 10 unless you have your storage to level 15 because you need to able to hold about 9,600, 
no, nine uh, nine hundred and sixty thousand stone to able to upgrade to the final level, and you need to be a level fifteen storage to able to get that done. So once you reach to your level nine, start focusing on that. Get your storage up there. Now. You don't really need to use this that much. Level seven is good enough. Uh, if you have time after you complete your stable and you max out your knights and you max out your bombardment, we're gonna talk about more like that. Then you can start focusing on this. Usually, like I told you, you're gonna be using gems to heal your units. You're gonna be using your gems to uh, speed up buildings. You wanna speed up heal and you wanna speed up buildings. That's how you save on your grain and wood. I know a couple of people told me that they're having trouble uh, in their advanced play with holding their grain, some of uh, the beginners, on um, their grain and wood. And my word of advice is that you're making too many units. You're making too many units for too many armies and you're spreading yourself thin. Just take your level one cheapest units for those other commanders if you wanna, if you wanna conquer the resources faster for the level 10 and six, but you don't want to do too much because once you reach level 18 and level 30, oh, sorry, level 18, 25, and 28, you're not going to have enough resources to make large army. You have to focus on that one commander, like I told you, because when you uh, when you fight with that one commander, every time you win a battle, you'll go to your healing station, you'll heal up your units, speed up, get it really. It's like 15 minutes, easy speed up the gems. Send them right back to that commander, conquer another, conquer another, conquer another, and you're pretty much recycling those units. I know I should have said this more on the advice of the advanced player, but kind of expert level, well, we're going to say it anyways because experts, maybe you're not doing this either. Uh, so this is the way how you save costs and units when you're going to conquer. But now that we're in level 10, now we got to build a big enough army with our other commanders. So, your bracket should be level 18. There's no point in leveling your bracket past level 18 until you get a large amount of army and you're really, really, you know, dishing them out. This, I highly recommend you leveling up to max because it does make your units come out faster. It would be 50% faster, and if you level up your uh, quarters to max, that is that's a 90% uh, decrease of uh, time that you have to wait for your units to actually come out, so you can be able to, you know, march them out there. And there's a way to get 100%. We'll go on that in a moment. So your stone lumber or grain i put level 13 because i don't use a lot of grain guys those who use a lot of grain you could get you, you could put it to level uh 15 if you want this is fine you don't need to go anymore because per you're only getting 500 so you're only gonna miss per hour about 2000 2500 grains uh it's that's uh, or grain stone all this stuff and it's not really a lot compared to what you can earn out on the field and conquering that and using your resources for something better like i said in the last video always 100 percent level up your market to 100 percent it's very important especially with your main hall if you do if you're like what i instructed and you're and you're saving your grains you'll be noticing that you're gonna convert your grains into stone, um, ores, and wood very easily because it's 80% conversion rate, which is almost 100, so you are losing a, a, a little bit. But hey, the two to one ratio is better than five to one ratio or four to one ratio. This is actually really good, so you're not losing a lot. Uh, you're actually just be able to transfer one to the other and if you are properly farming grain and you're and you're lacking in the other resource same thing like I was saying you could do it for wood do it for stone do it for ore that way you can do it the marketplace to do it and towards later game you're gonna need this especially when you're recovering now your battlement you have to make it level nine I'm actually working on a way to mastering it because the next thing you're going to need for war is actually your bowmen towers, which is your bombardments. I like to call it like that. 
I don't really think about Bowmans. I just think about giant cannons on my castle and blowing things up like, you know, <laughs> like they used to do in the old days. <laughs> Anyways, um, so with this, this is very important to speed up. It's very important to get because this is going to be able to set your defense. The max damage it's going to be able to do is actually going to be about 2,000. I believe 2,000 damage is the max damage it's going to do. Uh, but that's really good. Think about all those units of the enemies that's coming at your fortress. You want to wipe them out and you want them to send hundreds and hundreds. And this is each round. So every time they fight in your facility of your territory... When they're trying to capture it or anything else, you're going to fire those cannons and they're going to, they're, well, you're going to fire those bow and arrows and you're going to damage them significantly and that's going to create more of the defense. So this is very important to level up as much as you can. It does get a little bit pricey because once you reach level 10, it's going to cost you a lot of resources to do a lot of things, but focus on it. Do not waste on Fellowship Hall, level 4 is pretty good right now. I have no complaints on it. You know, you can do this all later on with the storage. You know, maxing all this out. What you want to really do is max out your marketplace, your battlement, your uh, your bowman tower. And now you're going to start working on your military academy. Your military academy in this, in this right now is going to help you and all your commanders be able to reach higher power levels for war. You're going to have to start training now two more, con uh, two more commanders. Good news though is if you're at this level, you're going to be able to level up those commanders quickly. You're not going to have worry. You're not going to be concerned about, oh, they're level 10. I got to get to level 20. Uh-uh-uh. Not one bit because you can actually do what is mock battle. The most important thing when you do a mock battle is take the highest level land. So once I conquer 35, I'm about to do 35 land, which is I'm going to take up this. Let it look. I'm going to actually take this. I'm going to conquer that land. And I'm going to put a fellowship on it, actually. I'm going to put a fellowship uh, barrier for my fellowship so they can come and aid me or be able to help me defend or even use some of the stuff I have. So once you get that and you're able to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to send them. Let's go with somewhere higher. Yeah, let's do mountain. Okay. You're going to send the person you want to level up. I'm actually focusing on... Um, Aragon focus on Aragon I'm focusing on Boromir I'm focusing on Hyragon so these three units here I'm actually going to be focusing to get them up to as much as I can I want to be able to get my other two commanders to level 30 now Aragon um I, I don't care so much how much he's leveling up. He's just leveling up naturally because I'm still capturing resources, but I don't have to work as hard. I'm going to show you how you could do that. Uh, you don't really have to work as hard anymore once you get to this level on capturing. You just got to be able to know what you're doing. So I'm going to click on here on Haragon. I'm going to click here and do that. But if I wanted to... Let's do Gandalf. If I wanted to, I can use more power levels and I'm going to be able to gain 18,000 EXP for just that once. You're also going to do your tips. Make sure you do your tips. Uh, I always clear up all my tips. I always get the EXP uh, for that. That's why we, we level up those other commanders to focus more on completing the tips faster because they'll level up faster. I have a tons of commanders. I have... All together, nine commanders, and I probably can get another one. I haven't checked uh, at all. I really haven't checked. Let's see here. Because I think I have almost all the common ones. I think the only one... Yeah, I only have one left here. Let's see here. One... No. Okay, so I can't get him quite yet. I'll be curious to see what he is. Now, I do have these... Oh, almost there almost to get on level three now I learned something here 
and I wanted to share. There's something new I learned. These chests, you don't need to do a time five. Every time you do a pull on it, whereas one or two, it takes away from the timer, which is like four more draws for a guarantee. So you, you can actually use one silver coin continuously, and then on your fifth, you're always going to get uh, the exquisite like gifts or legendary gift uh is you have a chance for both i'm actually working on it i i got already two scrolls that the game gave me for free um and hopefully i can get more scrolls so i can unlock that ghost king that would be really good i'll be that'll be really fun to do let's see here i don't know how many i know it's 30 for them for him oh man you need a lot yeah he's gonna take a while it doesn't matter. He's going to take a good, good long time to actually recruit him. All right. So, unless I get lucky and I just pull his inv invitation through the chest. Eh. So, uh, you're going to be able to train all your commanders. Make sure now you're going to do three. These are the commanders that you're going to siege buildings. So, right here, we're getting close to level 35. We're going to conquer this. We're going to get those ghost soldiers and we need to able to push. The reason why I'm using Haragon because Haragon here actually has an ability to increase his siege damage or his siege whatever his stat which is going to make him better to take down buildings. That's phenomenal. I'm building him up. I can't wait to see how that goes. He's not bad either. He actually has a pretty good... He's fast in marching, so he can get to one place to another space. And that's really what it is. Really good. Um, another unit that I like... I, Gandalf, I don't know if I like him too much. Um, he has some cool tricks, but eh. Uh, Aragon is actually really really good his his ability once you once you i what i suggest you once you level up these then you go in here this ability is just ridiculous it targets the, the one with the lowest defense and it does 60 percent damage just on level two when you level up i can't even I can't, it's probably 200 percent at the end and that's doing double the damage on the lowest target so that's an auto kill pretty much so he auto kills the weakest unit that's really good and it helps saves and since i've been doing that i less troops of my troops have been dying so when you're going and you're conquering and you have these things you have what is called a health bar on these uh on these structures as you can see it has two hundred thousand. On that little wall that means that's how much it takes to take down to conquer that one but it's worth it it's definitely worth it it's 200,000 now these statues are 250,000 I am gonna be capturing that as well as the second one over here but I'm gonna need the soldiers as well as the commanders to able to take them down so that's why i'm focusing on those three commanders and this is where you're going to be focusing on your three commanders because those three commanders all they're going to do is conquer destroy those base and you're going to do the best you can because that's how much you're going to produce now you should be at this level on your resources 35 30 000 or more I'm I, I'm a little behind on grain because I get tons of grain. I barely use it because I use that that trick I told you earlier. Um, I get free. I like the gems are really good for the pay to win players. Again, I don't recommend wasting your time on any of this stuff. Like even this hundred dollar pack is tempting because you do get sixty coins, and you do get some legendary items and weapons and stuff like that. That, that, I would say, is worth it. That might be worth it. If you want to throw some money into it, get the Smith gift uh, too. Uh, but besides that, I don't. I, I, it's not really worth it. The daily, you shouldn't really care. Uh, this is stamina tincture. That's to re I think it's to re yeah, re reduce, uh, recover 60% of, or 60 stamina, whatever. And right here, this is, not worth it 
And this is where if you guys who are pay to win, you want a little boost, you get the, uh, the one. At this moment, at this moment, like I said, your season pass, definitely the second, the second monthly. But when you reach like level nine, you may want to consider to spend money in the first month. It's only going to help you because you're going to, you're going to need to use speed ups a little bit and gems are the best way to do speed ups. Like I tell everybody now, free to play players, don't worry. They give you tons and tons of gem as well. I just want it. I got a little impatient, so I wanted to do a little bit more uh, as far as my buildings go. It has nothing to do with the troops. It has to do with more of the buildings because they were just taking forever. And I really wanted to release this video in a proper time for all you guys to follow along because I think a lot of you are heading towards this level. You're getting a little worried. Your servers are starting to announce that people are declaring war on each other. Um, the enemy is getting closer. You look at your borders. And all you see is this red line. You just see this massive red line. And it, and it's and you should be concerned because once they start breaking the walls uh, and they start really heading in there and sending their, uh, sending their troops in there, it's not going to stop those whales. I'm letting you know it's not going to stop those whales uh, from coming in there and, you know, wiping you out just because they need extra resources. You know, that's why you got to build your defenses. And you got to make it so it's not worthwhile for them to go after you. They'll go after the smaller units, the smaller people that, you know, don't really try and they're over there. They'll go after them. But for you guys, you guys are experts. You guys are diehards. You guys are going to be able to do this and be accelerant at what you need to do. So, here, yeah, I wanted to show my season pass. Um, I did complete everything. I'm just waiting for the tips and hold on. Complete everything. And what's good about the season pass, they do give you a legendary weapon. They give you tons of free gems. I mean, the gems on here are just phenomenal. But really, it's the chapters that give you the most amount of land. And at this time, as you can see, my ring power is 13,000. I'm super happy to announce I made it in the top 100 for the ring event. So I am ranked 99. So I was just on the crest um, of losing it, but I'm really excited that I did get in there. Um, I did pass that rank, uh, that rank battle, and they gave me a free 500 gems. <laughs> so it was really nice to do that. Uh, ring power. Ring power. I'm already at 51, level 51 ring power. As you can see, I focused everything on harvesting. That's what you st should still be doing until all this is max. Uh, now I'm gonna actually be boosting up my grains because like I said now I'm gonna be focusing on building armies So I'm not gonna be focusing on buildings just focusing on those a couple of ones and getting my knights my swan knights out and Leveling that up to max so I can be able to produce them How do you get to a hundred percent on? releasing units, right? So you get a 40% on your a 40% on your quarters and then you get a 50% on just having a mastery of the uh, conscription on the conscription post but there's also one other feature which is something that I recommend you doing next this will actually give you a 10% maximum it will give you 10% I believe so if I remember I looked at statistics it will give you I think it gives you 10% or at least 5% or something like that. So it gets you close to 100% for you to do. And that's you're producing units like crazy. You won't be able to have enough resources to produce the bulk masses that you're going to be producing per hour. So that's what's really important. So after you're done getting your resources, just spend one. Go in here, spend one. Boom. Boom very easy the other the other ring power there's nothing i see here that's very valuable the sweeping i don't see is very valuable i don't see this is very valuable this may help you if you're attacking uh stationaries this may help you if you're attacking bases that have armies on it but since you're, you're still capturing resources you're attacking buildings it's not going to help you on that this is only for armies that are camped in certain areas uh and also monsters that are there 
This right here, to be honest with you, I th I believe it's not worth any of this. This right here, maybe the mock battle. Because the mock battle... Come on. There you go. The mock battle, the stamina cost, uh, minus one stamina cost, is really good. Uh, that may be worth it, but it's your your commanders will gain exp from the tavern and everything else this it's it's you don't have to rush that whatsoever so this branch right here not really useful this branch the marching speed that is useful you're gonna need the marching speed and the reposition feed uh, speed to actually get in there if you want to increase your durabilities, this is only for the fort, not your main building, your forts, which we're going to go into that. Uh, then you, what you want to do is you want to focus in here, get your fort abilities up and be able to master that up for up to like, you don't really have to master all the way. Probably level five would be significant enough because uh, your forts are really what we're talking about here when you're when you're talking about marching range and how far you go so i'm going to show you a little bit of that i uh, just wanted to show you pretty much how the ring power is and what you should be sending out uh because right now you need to create a massive amount of army so we go in here as you can see this only actually took me like one hour to make 300 no to make 560 out of that this is 300 and it took me one hour just to get to a thousand on that so there is a lot of units that we have here all right now we're gonna go to levies look at that get 12,000 boom already at 15 um, let's see here all right so I want to show you the trick with the army so let's go here That's 28. We, I think I should wait a little bit more to get more soldiers uh, because in two minutes all those soldiers will be dropping and he's in six minutes. So why we wait for that? Let's just go into the marching. All right. So in your map here, I, it's a little hard to see, but on your mini map, you'll see these little circle rings. That's going to be your marching range. How far you can actually march there. Now, I did put a couple of forts. Because once you get to this point, you can use your allies of the same factions. You can use their squares to connect to certain land. Can't do this very much early in the game. Your server has to be caught up. And you don't really want to do that. What you want to do is... Here, let me... Greetings. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, guys. He wants to ask a favor of me. There you go. Anyways, back because they were talking in there, and I don't want it on my on my stream. All right. Uh, so this is where you're gonna position yourself, and you're gonna really think smart because now your resources from your rectangle is going to dry up but it's still good to have because look at this so what you're pretty much going to do is when you get in here once you're done with your rectangle you're going to start expanding outwards so when you go over here i put a fort here and in that fort you're going to be able to reposition a uh, reposition a commander in there and when you reposition a commander in there you're going to be able to get your marching increase so that way you can get to certain points. Like from here, I believe, because I put them here, I got to let this load up. See, I was able to get over the mountain and be able to take these, but usually you won't be able to capture that. You do need to put a commander in there. You got to be careful with your commander because one of the things is, is that how do you recall it? Once the commander's there, he's kind of stuck there. You can recall him back to your castle, but reinforcing him, you cannot change the uh, units that he carries. You have to recall him back in the castle. And if you're sending your commander that far away, 
it's gonna take a long 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 time for him to come back like 10 minutes one way and 10 minutes back and just to send him back over to the fortress so you can have increase so this is where your smaller commanders come into play once you get your three top commanders done you're gonna want to send your lesser commanders into the forts that you're not going to use whatsoever so that way you can be able to extend yourself and be able to keep capturing your value points because well that that one point 170 points so that's exactly what you want to do on there and i believe i believe one of our units should be done let's see here let's go back in the castle go here boom I only have this guy we're gonna drop him in there okay well that's it's good enough 39 is good enough to make my point so we're gonna look for a place to conquer hopefully there's one close by I mean I capture most of them around me to be honest with you so let's see here and this is a cool little trick um, it will save you a lot of resources let's see here man ba -ba -ba -bum. oh now we're going way too far I mean you got this here but That's not connected. Let's go back to base here. Okay, I was working on the other side of the river. Uh, All right, so apparently, oh, here you go. Here's one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and capturing. You always wanna be underwhelming because it's gonna be the e easiest, but if you have no choice, then you can go ahead and send your troops to do evenly match. It's gonna take a lot of your troops away. Uh, that's, that's why it's gonna be a little bit pain, but if you're underwhelming, underwhelming, then you're not gonna have so much of a trouble of getting rid of those other units that are placed in there and you're gonna be able to heal your other units faster and it's gonna cost you less resources so why he's marching over there let's go and send this guy here see if I can give him some reinforcements okay he's gonna get reinforcement to go 20,000 This guy is almost done with mock battle. He's ready to turn here. He leveled up. You see, it's very easy to level up your commanders. We're going to put one in siege. I'm going to maximize the siege. Right here. It was able to get another accomplishment. And this is why I'm saying they, they give you free gems a lot resources and speeds up free free, uh, free speed up by just completing your task your missions um and it's not going to be so much of a problem and here this is where you there is sometimes let me let me we re, 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 let me reword this uh properly uh, there is going to be some waiting periods that you're going to need to wait for your troops to get up or your buildings to be completed. Uh, it, it's There's no way around it. It's going to happen. It, unfortunately, that's how it is. And like I said here, with your buildings that you're waiting, like this is three hours. I'm just going to do this for just for a demonstration. It's only 108 of that. And then here we got a free... So we got our bowmen and now we need our battlemen to be level 8. Which we need about that much here. I have tons of grains so I'm able to transfer 
most of my stuff you see and it doesn't cost that much it's a fair balance I always want to give a little bit more let's go here badminton okay so six minutes there's gonna be a war so we're gonna be building that so that way when that's level 10 we're gonna be able to complete and be able to get our full bow of bowmen so our defense we never have to worry about our defense along there's a little bit of army and the other soldiers so if a army that is like 12,000 power attacks my settlement and I have an army that's 2,000 per round that's gonna happen that other army is gonna receive 2,000 damage which will wipe out I think that's about 2,000 damage is close to about 10,000 power that's about 10,000 power of units that are gonna die so you should be able to wipe them out very clearly and not have problems in your 2,000 units should be alive with no problem whatsoever at least I mean at least a thousand left I don't know how it works as far as this game goes like do the bowmen's attack first or do they allow the enemy to attack and then the bowmen's will hit them so we'll figure that part out now I'm really excited for these knights I can't wait to get them out there on the field when you do your barracks you uh, you're gonna focus on a little bit of level two but only I for me for knights they're worth it just do a little bit level two they're fast they have a decent amount of armor um, they actually do a pretty significant amount of damage compared to these guys they don't do as much damage so that's why I kind of transform from the knights to this even though these guys have higher defense and you got to look at what you're gonna do for sieging now when you siege these guys are much better at sieging they're 22 points so you want to be able to produce a lot more than using like these guys which they only have 18 so they're not the best uh, sieging you how you doing there scar welcome to the channel we're just going over some tips and tricks if you have any questions please feel free to ask we're more than happy to answer them <laughs> so that's pretty much it when it comes to that um, we're just waiting for the other guy to go ahead and tack. Proceed on that. Ah, oh, man, that castle is just so beautiful. It is just so beautiful to see it accomplished at max level. It was worthwhile. I thought it was going to be a rinky-dinky castle, but man, it really grew in size. And I think they did a great job at this. I do have to confirm that I really like Lord of the Rings Rise to War. It is a, an amazing, an amazing, amazing game. I, it's one of my favorite city builders, army builders that I have played in a very long time. Um, I know a lot of people want me to do Warhammer, uh, Lost Crusade. I'm more than willing to jump into that game, but right now I'm currently focusing on Lord of the Rings. And yeah. Oh, so you're in server 15? Awesome. What main, what main hall are you are right now? You guys should be, a, I think you're ahead of us. Uh, how do I go to my servers? Does it let me? Does it tell me where my server is? I'll, I'll figure it out later. <laughs> I think, wait, I think I am a level, I think I'm server 14 or 13 when I signed up. Oh, there you go. Now the battle is underway. So now we conquered this land easily, right? So this is the trick I was telling you guys. When you face under, uh, under, underwhelming, he's going to be able to go in. His power level was 39,000. He's 33. Because we, because we were able to fight in underwhelming, we didn't lose a lot of troops. So we're going to go back into my castle. We're going to go here. We're going to forget about that message. And we're going to go ahead and treat. It takes 20 minutes, but this is why I was saying you should only use your gems for speeds up of buildings and also healing. So right now we got a free heal. And we're going to do this. It's going to be done in 20 seconds. 
and that's going to give us our power again to go ahead and strike another uh, landmass. So with that, we're going to do really well. War is coming. The the <laughs> the enemy is definitely prepared. I think um, when that we complete, when the server completes the next challenge, they're going to get a big boost and they're going to start attacking us. That's going to be very interesting. I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see how that works. Uh, let me see here. Boom, boom. Yeah, they're going to be attacking control points. So that's going to be very scary. Bum, bum, bum. And now what you're going to do is you're going to go back to your unit after using your speed up. You're going to go here. You're going to reinforce. And there you go. You save a little bit. You lose a little bit of guys. You're losing about 3,000 power, but it's not like the 10,000. If you keep doing, if you keep going from one space to another and keep conquering that and you're trying to heal, you're not going to get as much of power back as far as the power level. It's going to be much lower than you doing here, healing up your units, sending it back into battle. You're actually going to get more power levels by keep repeating this process than you are going from one square to another square. And it's going to be a lot harder for you to actually conquer the level 28. Because for some weird reason, this game, no matter if it's 24, if your units are at 22 and you're at 20, 22, uh, 20, uh, sorry, 24, uh, when they're at 24 power level, 24,000 power level, then you're going to go into the 30 33 or 34,000 is going to say evenly match you don't want that because you're going to have a hard time and they're going to take away more of your units and more of your powers but if you got underwhelming then you're going to lose a little bit and you're going to be able to keep conquering resources very fast warbin says warbin says ah! to victory <laughs> No, uh, the Salon army. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm I'm actually kind of a little scared when the war breaks free because if you look at here, they are they are conquering that whole border. I mean, this uh, this nation is doing a lot better than what we are. Uh, they're actually going to be pushing in pretty hard soon. So I'm a little bit worried uh, once the uh, the update comes and they're able to get double the attack or something like that. I, I don't. I think it's like not really double, like thirty percent. That's gonna be a little interesting. So, luckily for me, I'm very close to getting my ghost army. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah. Uh, luckily for me, you're gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna be getting my ghost army, and that's when I'm gonna really conscribe a lot of units and they die quick they're meant to die quick um they're meant to die very quick but here i'm gonna just go back to demonstrating when i was saying conquering more spaces it's getting to the point now where higher resources are going to be a little bit harder to attain unless i send my units far i guess this is why i did this here you go boom and you got underwhelming so you're able to send your units back out there and they're actually gonna uh, quickly uh, capture that and you just repeat you wash repeat wash repeat and this is why I always say that you want your main commander to be the the be the highest one all the way until you get to main hall 10 don't focus on no other commanders, focus on your main commander. And that commander is always gonna be, but once you get to main hall 10, then you start focusing on two more commanders. And these three commanders are gonna be the commanders you need to siege, for you to need to fight and do damage and take control. So, like I was saying before, once I get them up to level 30, which I should be able to get them up in a couple of days, 
by giving them mock battles and giving them simple tasks and start having them conquer space and start conquering squares because I got like 16 squares and they're already level like power level 20 I'm just gonna prom uh, promote more units and get their power levels higher so they can start at least doing some evenly match and getting some really exp boost then I'm coming after this thing right here oh yeah I'm so excited for this I'm excited for this and I'm excited to steal the steal the statue here these two right here oh can't wait to get these bad boys into my army these oath breakers man they are nasty yes they have zero defense but man look at that cost look at that cost 300 300 300 I don't care if their defense is zero man I can build armies upon armies with these guys I can like literally release and they have these crazy 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 special abilities they're immune to physical damage I don't know about you but most of the army out there is physical damage how nutso is that <laughs> but they cannot heal but who cares look why would you care if they heal just 300 look how easy it is yes they cost they cost money but if you follow my videos and you follow the advice you're gonna have plenty of levies you're gonna have tons and tons of gold to build a massive army about this same here if you look at this attack does focus damage and they receive minimal damage crazy third ability wounded units so all defeated units wounded units die after battle which they perish that means they never come back oh well and right here is this right here is the undead which is when they're bound by the ring of power or brought back by dark magic the undead spirits will weak the whatever bonds to mid-earth I don't really understand what that is but hey you know how it is really excited for this I don't know what the statue is gonna give us for as a present or as the reward to first conquer it it's gonna be really awesome to see I think but it's a uh, but forget about all that other nonsense do you see that power level that you get from it 500 500 now when you click on it it's gonna tell you unknown strength but we know the strength already uh, the game is actually pretty predictable so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take another field and you're gonna match up the strength it's about 45 45,000 which I'm very close to making on my main commander uh, but I need my other commander so he has seven levels away he has 22 levels and we are gonna smash once we get those swan knights because they're gonna literally double up my power level for each commander so I should be able on my main commander I should be able to get 60,000 power level 60,000 power levels by making a hundred swan knights and using the other uh, the cataphracts as well as the knights themselves I should be able to get easily 60,000 uh, power level with my swan knights they are ridiculously powerful and I can't wait to get these guys in my army then once I get them in my army and I capture these two statues I'm gonna go hunting and that's when we're gonna make our next video which is gonna be Lord of the Rings Rise to War Master Tips because at that moment folks if you're already at that level you're gonna be a master you're gonna be the one that actually gonna change the deciding fate of Middle Earth you're gonna be the war band that is gonna change the whole world you are gonna be responsible for saving us I'm looking at you there Wells instead of killing your own kind Conquer the ring! Become the master of the ring! That's what it's all about, folks. That's what we're doing. Crazy good. Alright, I got my monthly packs in. Boop. Which was a pleasure. And then I got my mock battle report. Is he done yet? Once he, once he goes over there, then we'll call the video. So that's five minutes from now. So, 
let's just review everything that we talked about. All right, so first thing we talk about is that once you get your level nine, here, bo -bo -bo. once you get your, I uh, sorry, once you get your level ten, you what you want to focus on after you get your main hall ten is start building your battlement, your defense. Your military academy to increase the stats of your uh, of your commanders. You should not have only you should only have level one till you got to level ten. Then you start mastering your uh, uh, military academy. That's when you start boosting your commander stats because this is when you're really starting to do battle. You should have your market at max level. Your bowman should be at least a level eight. I understand if it's not max level at this time because. The battlement does require um, a level 10 main hall, and it does take a while to get there, so don't worry about that. I, I can understand on that. Uh, your other grains and stuff, don't worry. 15 is good. Your barracks should be 18. Don't worry about your barracks anymore, but your, constri uh, your constriction post, that's what you really want to master. That's the next thing that you should really be putting into your plans. You want to, of course... Master 100% your quarters uh, to level 10, and that way you can get your final troops. It will cost you a hefty amount, and even just making these guys come to life, they do cost a lot, but they are worth it. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, these will increase your power level, but if you look at their siege, if you look at their siege power, they're not that much different than a knight. A knight has 22 siege power, uh, where a, a sworn knight is 28, so that's six. A cataphract is in between. I think it's like, I think cataphracts are like 23. It's not that much different than a knight. Knights are way better at sieging. Um, way more cost effective. You can take a whole bunch and just throw it out into the wind. Uh, there is a limited amount of numbers that you can put on one commander, and they won't let you do any more than that, uh, which sucks, but, you know, that's how the game is. Now, rangers are actually pretty good. I got to really utilize and see how rangers are from the Red Book stories. Um, they're really good at taking out long-distance bowmen, and they really do damage. They really wipe out a lot of archers with very little troops. Um, but besides that, they're not that really that good. I don't like them that much. Um, they don't really have a purpose, uh, for as far as capturing resources and, uh, sieging, uh, to get the bigger towers. Um, I, I would skip on them for me, but if you like the whole range idea, they are range attacks and melee attack for, no, these are melee attacks. They're not range. Um, then you can go ahead because... They do receive less damage. If you're fighting against somebody like an elven army, elven armies, uh, they really use a lot of bows, long, long range. That's what it is. Most elven things are all range. If you don't look at the sentinel, range right here, range. And then this is the only one. Their heralds are really their only ones that they use physical attacks. So elven armies, those rangers would be really good against, but not that much. Uh, then you got the light cavaliers. These guys are like in between when you fight against their factions uh, They're in between like range and melee, you know, it's whatever. I like these the Gungorians I mean the Gondor Gondorians because they're really good at close combat really good at sieging buildings really amazing and the dwarves are pretty good too uh they they are mostly between each one they have a, pretty much they're more physical but i think they're more focused on sieging if i remember or no 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 what am i remembering hold on they are oh they're they're tanky there you go i was trying to remember they're very tanky have a lot of hp a lot of the dwarf commanders they heal my god let me tell you this commander surprises me he is absolutely amazing absolutely amazing not only 
does he give the army plus speed and defense but man this guy heals like a madman heals like a mad man he is really good and there you go i conquer that base so back to the final thing like i was just going to show you guys again we conquer this he's now twenty six thousand. see 26 so we went from going from 36 to 26 which is a 10,000 gap like that's what we did before now we're gonna go back into the castle go here heal up our units all the way it's a 30 minutes we have two of these boop uh, 30 seconds we can wait for 30 seconds um, and then we're gonna send these guys back over to him so he can do again and conquer that's what pretty much it is We'll send them, uh, send them back so you guys can see the power levels. And yeah, this is the expert advice. Get ready for war. It's going to be crazy. Our next video is going to be amazing. Uh, once we get the Swan Knights and we get all the stuff. It's going to take... Give me some time to make that video. It may take me a week. Uh, a week and a half. Because I, it's, it's got to be a lot of building. I'm going to be focused on a lot of building before I do war. And then uh, with you guys, I'm going to show you how to do a pro appropriate war against the bigger armies of of the ring <laughs> all right so let's go over here see boom he's thirty thousand. we didn't lose that much you know got the got the military back out there very conquer very controlled i do need to produce though the one thing i need to produce more of is probably or stone i don't need to produce uh, uh, any more stone uh my building is almost done and once i'm done with the swan knights i don't think i'm gonna build anything else maybe build them slowly um besides the bowman settlement and the wall defense and i think that's it oh and the con and the conscription posts those are the three things i'm going to build and i'm going to give building my building some break and focusing on fully full-blown getting all those swan knights out there it's going to be awesome it's going to be exciting you guys are going to love to see it let's uh keep these guys safe recall them back to the to the building and thank you all for watching i had a wonderful time thank you guys for all the support i really appreciate everything i mean you guys have been awesome uh you know we hit our first 1000 views so uh, it's all up to, it's all because of you guys out there thank you for continued supporting make sure to like and subscribe this is gabriel phoenix and i am so happy to give you guys good quality content good quality content for these type of games if you want any other games let me know i do mobile games and switch games i'm more than happy to do reviews if it's in my power if i have the game or even on the mobile game i'll do my best and give you my honest opinions my dogs are barking they need to go outside all right guys have a wonderful day and god bless you all see you